All right, I'm going to start up some morning video stuff today. Uh, not planning on making this super long, starting the Facebook Live here. Hello, Facebook Live. This is uh, the GoPro that grabs the uh, wide angle off of our time together. And getting the two, getting these two married up so that they're next to each other is uh, proving to be a uh, hilarious pursuit. And in order to uh, maximize the technical chaos of these morning videos, I have a third device, this old Galaxy tablet. You know, I, have, I got a lot of stuff just in the bin kicking around here. So I've got the Galaxy tablet, and I'm starting a YouTube Live at the same time as a Facebook Live. And um, I'm just putting that one as test tablet. <laughs> okay, next. So um, then it's going to ask me for a, uh, a thumbnail. Okay, so now I got my thumbnail on there. I'm gonna make that go live, and we're gonna test the. Uh, we're gonna test the. Good morning, Hopeton. Good morning, Sean Tierney. Good morning, Sam Cook. Um, so we've got Facebook Live, YouTube Live, and the uh, GoPro up top here, and all three of these. I'm gonna make what I'm gonna call my conversational cluster, um, and some of you guys are gonna have one view and some of you guys are going to have another view and I think that sounds nifty. I just think we've got ourselves a neat little little clatch going here and at the same time I don't know if you guys spotted it but there's also a delightful old laptop involved in the whole thing and uh, for those of you guys on the Facebook live there's the old laptop and we'll hit the, pot, the uh, space button and We'll go up here and we'll get back the, uh, we'll get back, oh, there's me watching a Paul Joseph Watson video on YouTube. Oh, guilty pleasure. I find the, some of these snide, nasty guys are so funny sometimes. All right, and let's get a new tab up. So yesterday morning, oh, and I have headphones on, but they're not official. I'm going to take them off. <laughs> I wish I had the, uh. You know these guys that do, um, when did I grow a beard? <laughs> I was born this way. Um, so, <laughs> so I've got a live feed to, this morning we've got a live feed going from an old tablet to YouTube. <laughs> we've got a live feed going to Facebook from my iPhone, and we've got Research Central and an archival wide angle that's going to go up on YouTube later today. And I'll be taking comments and questions through the, um, through the YouTube and, um, and Facebook so I can see <laughs> what's going on there. So Facebook is here. YouTube is here. Archival Wide Angle, which is more pleasant to look at and listen to, is there. And Research Central is in the middle here. I feel like I'm at the helm of a, a, a real operation here, but it, it, what's funny is the uh, the uh, the GoPro is several years old. It's a Hero 2, still takes 1080. The uh, YouTube feed is on a uh, relatively ancient, um, you know, and the Facebook is on a. Um, on a uh, an iPhone 7. I don't know how many iPhones we're up to now, but this is fun. I got YouTube live, Facebook live, big wide angle. I got my research computer. We're, we're in this right now. This is fun. I have to work on what I put on my uh, in my background. I guess YouTube has a nice view of this thing. This is a piece of art that just got given to me. Um, hey, good morning, everybody. Good to have you with me. This piece of art just got given me. This is really cool. Um, it's a, a beautiful pit bull print. Um, pretty epic stuff. But uh, well, here we are. Yesterday morning, we had a. I had a. Uh, had a pretty intense morning yesterday, thinking about um, some of these articles that have been coming up. And yesterday's video has got, hey, hey, howdy, howdy, Jacob, I got some mail from you, thank you for that, and um, I'm working on my wheel well jigs, 
I've got folks that want wheel wells. I have been putting off wheel wells on my makes for a long time now. And, um, and the reason I put off making wheel wells, you may have heard me say in other videos, is that wheel wells are um, they're kind of a joke. Uh, I have a beautiful wheel weld board behind me. Um, I, I said they're kind of a joke. These wheel wells are no joke. Look at how beautiful they are. Look at this beautiful scalloping. This is from Skater Built. Um, it is a five ply for mica bottom. Okay, so when you have only one layer of stiff laminate, you're not going to get any extra stiffening in the board. That's a truth. The only stiffness will be um, will be through the single layer of glue and the stiffness of that ply. That's really not a stiffening top technology. In order for this formica to give stiffness to the board, you need a layer somewhere in the sandwich. Are you guys are you guys enjoying this? Because I am. I love talking about laminate. Um, all all tack laminates, all of the laminates that, that purport or pretend to make strength have to be, that's fiber laminates or, um, now this is probably not intended to strengthen, although it's on, it's on, literally this is a one, two, three, four, five ply, one, two, three, four, five ply layup with this on there. I think that the, the idea over at Skater Built was probably to strengthen this board with Formica. And the Formica does, I mean, talk about beautiful. Guys, you realize, let me recount that real quick, because I've got one, two, three, four, five. Guys, this is not a, a five ply. This is a six ply um, in which the Formica is actually a very thick Formica ply. So this is not a five ply. This is a six ply, and the sixth ply is a thick Formica. So the, the plastic backing on this Formica is, is really thick. And I'm telling you, it's handsome. Look at the way that Formica fades. Um, beautiful, gorgeous. So one of the things about, um, so fiber laminates or, or extra laminates only lend strength when they're sandwiched. So either, so this is, this is an outer ply. If you put one ply down, you put a layer of a special laminate that can stiffen it, then you've got a stiffer, right? Um, if you put it on the outside here, it stiffens. But without a corresponding laminate, what you're getting is just the strength of whatever the laminate is made of. And that means um, this is a terrific board. And this was a gift to me. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, and um, I really, really appreciate it. And um, um, from Jay Smith, and it is a rad board. It's obviously a, a factory crafted. It's got punches. Um, ob obvious that at the at the workshop somebody's punching these and siding in the holes and doing that. And I just I think it's the bee's knees. Um, also, it's got uh, just the littlest bit of a tri tail, which is uh, something you can always appreciate. A little bit of a tri tail there for YouTube archival. Um, and uh, I won't ride this one. This is not going to get ridden by me. I'm going to keep it and look at it. But I have two problems with wheel wells. I've told you before. Uh, first problem is uh, wheel wells are an aesthetic challenge. Um, if I'm going to do wheel wells, I want to do them in a way that I know I can get symmetry. And I have yet to see symmetrical wheel wells, even on serious factory work with CNC. Um, I can see that the wheel wells aren't symmetrical, and I think they look terrific, and I should just get over it, really. I'm not critical of these wheel wells. These are beautiful, gorgeous, and I should be just crushing wheel wells into my boards. The second problem with wheel wells is a little bit more close to my heart, and it is that, I don't know if you guys who ride wheel wells have ever noticed this, but this is the apex of the wheel well, the deepest point. And the wheel, uh, depending on your trucks and risers and all that, the wheel's going to land anywhere from here to here to there to there. And you've got a wheel well. This wheel well is dug so you've got one, two, and a half plies at the edge. The edge is a really important part of the board for force dispersal. And when you, when you cut this wheel well out, you are really 
compromising force dispersion in in the in the DAC. And it better be for a good reason. And it better that apex of the wheel well better be right where my wheel hits. And it drives me nuts to see a wheel well cut so deeply. Um, in a, in a six-ply board, this one is more than half the way through at the edge. That means that force dispersion is going to hit inside here and really going to cause you uh, some, some breakage, you know, possibilities. And, um, and man, that better fit. Now up here, of course, you get less breakage because you're not dealing with as, as uh, large a lever. Here, back here, you've got an enormous lever putting strain right on the line of the wheel wells. Uh, up here, I think go wild with it, and they did, and I love it. I love the double scallop on this wheel well. I think it's just terrific, and um, I hope that uh, folks who are enjoying these boards, I know some folks in Texas are riding this board, and I just think it's a terrific deck, and I wish you all the best. Um, but uh, I have held off from wheel wells for those two reasons. Uh, one is I want to assure that they're aesthetically perfect, and two, that... Um, the the whole um, matching the apex of the wheel well with the contact point of the wheel um, switching trucks switching wheels RKP TKP these all factor in so when I when I ask someone um, that's right uh, Mike Villalobos on Facebook says I always say with a product a product is only as strong as its weakest point I'd also offer that a community is always only as strong as its weakest link and that link and that's why the most healthy communities are always looking to strengthen their weakest members rather than uh, shorten the chain and I think skateboarding has a lot um, now, Lou Statman brings up different truck geometry could be another issue with wheel wells. There you have RKP, reverse kingpin trucks versus traditional kingpin trucks, TKPs. They turn differently. They contact the board differently. And, um, and so really my answer for wheel wells is like a $30 custom upgrade where I take that deck and I take a set of matching trucks, wheels, diameters. I mark a contact point and I burrow out that contact point putting the apex of the wheel well right where that wheel's going to hit. So you got a nine inch truck, um, you're going to tell me which brand. Say you have an Indy 169, that's nine, nine point one, depending on the factory cutoffs on the axles, you'd never know. So you got a nine inch truck and you got a 60 millimeter center cut wheel, or you've got a 60 millimeter, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, monster truck wheel or you know you got to get the the length of the wheels and the, the diameter of the wheels then you need to talk about risers how many risers are you going to run and now we can sight in your wheel well and I conceive of spending some workshop time and building out jigs that give me an apex point punch that I can lay on my decks with my concave and you can tell me your wheel and I can find the punch correspondence with a layover, and then I'll know that your wheel well apex meets your wheel contact point. And um, <clears throat> the other thing is, you know, folks, this is one of the most beautiful weld decks I've ever seen. This is just terrific, and boy, do I respect and love the craft that went into making this board. And I also am jealous because um, I want to make beautiful wheel wells like these um, but uh, I also want to build a table jig that I can just lean the board into and get a standard cut wheel well right now I do them by hand with a, a little drum and I use my hands and I ninja that thing in place and I think there are some real merits to the hand hewed you know uh, warp and weft of handmade wheel wells um, Especially, I mean, this is as nice as they come. They're not symmetrical, and they're terrific. You know, this one is, this one is a different shape and size and angle than that one is, and nobody even notices that, and nobody should notice that because stoke is what makes a board perform well, outside of major issues. You know, um, I am not a, I'm not anti precision. I'm not anti perfection. I'm always shooting for perfection and precision. But I've learned 
that it's inspiration and stoke that really make our boards uh, go nuts. It is. It's it's all about that inspiration, getting that cerebellum fired up with all the the, the good dopamines and stuff that skateboarding is meant to release, which is why also, guys, culturally, I'm super against the cortisol and adrenaline rush skateboarding that is such a battle um, in the mind and heart of the, the skater. Um, you've got this whole format that's emerged over the years of super cortisol-induced crazy rush skateboarding uh, and um, you know folks are, are making themselves sick trying to measure up on the pecking order and it breaks my heart to see it but um, today we're talking about wheel wells and stoke and laminates and I do not know the skater built people much love and respect to you and your work um, much care for what you do and a thanks to Jay Smith for the gift of this beautiful board. Um, and um, I'm, I'm happy that I get to be involved with this. Yesterday, I, uh, I have no apologies to offer for my perspectives. Uh, for those of you who watched yesterday's video, you may enjoy uh, some, some spicy rhetoric. I still hold to the opinion that Jenkin Mag, um, these uh, other mags and stuff, they are a good source for topics, but they are a bad source for answers. Um, I have become convinced to some extent that these people really don't know what they're talking about. Bruno, I see you on Facebook. Good to see you, Bruno. Love you. Tim Schaefer, thanks for your comments. Wheel Diam, yeah, we, we've gone through the, the, the issues around, um, uh, around, uh, wheel wells today. I've got a couple of boards on that, that I need to do wheel wells on and um, it's emotional to me because I care about your boards. I don't want your boards marred and I also don't want to lose a bunch of really good laminate because a wheel well is less than perfectly aesthetically pleasing, especially in a world of fancy paint jobs and wheel wells that are just off. And uh, you know what? It's a grain of salt to me. I don't really take it like too deep. My heart doesn't break. But I see the wheel wells out there and the wheel marks are not in the apexes. And when I say it bothers me, I want you to know it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers me when uh, some of this stuff breaks out. <clears throat> and um, and uh, you get these, these uh, disappointing... Uh, dynamics with our retailers and with our brands and with our distributions and you know you see that going on and you see the the value being driven out of skateboarding uh, in favor of uh, of quicker money grabs that aren't going to last as long they're not going to support families they're not going to create jobs in skateboarding they're not going to create more valuable products and better culture oh boy oh boy and I can see that I've been able to see it since I was young and, um, you know, I raised a family instead of getting sponsored. Oh my, Lou Statman. Lou Statman comments vision. And I would, I would recommend that every skateboarder who has an inclination to do so, uh, look up the career of Brad Dorfman, look up the careers, the career decisions of our industry, look up the career decisions of the brand owners, watch the Epically Laters, and listen to some of the industry dynamics and the cultural dynamics among major players I mean, you can watch Ed Templeton's. I tend to wonder if someday Ed Templeton's Epically Later might not get scrubbed off. Um, look at Ed Templeton's breakdown. Uh, Brad Dorfman literally sent uh, Aryan Brotherhood neo-Nazi skinheads to pick up equipment from Ed Templeton. You know, Ed Templeton experienced having his checks stolen and, and being betrayed. And you'd like to think that's just something of the past, but you know, it's, it's not. It's completely unaccountable behavior on behalf of people in the industry. It's gone on for now three decades. We've got 30 XYZ years of unethical industry leadership. And here's where it shows. Um, it shows in the fact that the, the emerging skateboarders are forming their own clubs. You know, uh, you're seeing a lot of girls' crews coming up, and they've got a crew together. That's all a positive. That's not a loss. Skateboarding can't lose. But 
uh, it is good when we call BS on stuff that is BS. So um, until now, calling BS has usually been met with rule number one, don't talk shit on the industry. But um, now uh, calling BS is starting to be recognized as actually a form of advocacy for the skateboarder. That's where the Compass North needs to be. Compass North needs to be... By the way, I heard that Compass North is actually moving to Russia now. Um, I heard that. It's... Uh, it's, it's the Polar North is moving. I don't know. I have no idea. Sounds neat. Thank you, Internet, for telling me the Polar North is moving. That's neat. I mean, for morning coffee, yesterday I learned Polar North is moving. I don't know. Ed Pigeon, Age of Aquarius, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, but, uh, you know, that's where we need to be. We need to be Compass North on, on, uh, what is really good for the skateboarder now and that's not just good morning howard gorski good morning good to see you um uh, the facebook crowd is dope i don't know who's watching on uh, youtube i've got two folks on youtube direct and i'm going to upload the wide angle of this to youtube for those of you who enjoy a larger view of my office yesterday i went over to the workshop after our office time i didn't do a video from the workshop but I did enjoy uh, making seven more decks and uh, moving several orders into box. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got some good stuff coming out of the workshop right now. And I found a new exciting glue supplier that is working with me. You know, uh, there are glue companies across the country that are really good glue companies. Um, honestly, folks, I'm going to tell you. Never buy a skateboard because they advertise some special glue. I have made really good quality skateboards with really low quality glue, as well as broken and 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 uh, and, and gnarly bad quality wood with deep deep uh, deep flaws in every ply. I've made great skateboards that way. I've become convinced that the key to great skateboard laminate is the the adequate spreading and proper spreading of glue. You can't put it on too thick and you can't put it on too thin. And it is also the amount of time that it sits in the press. I think uh, four hour minimums are really, really superb. Um, there's four hour, there's fourth hour, there's two hour, there's one hour, there's half hour, and the industry standard in most factories is uh, seven minute pressings. Um, Process is the key. Now, the better the glue, my National Casein glue, uh, rest in peace National Casein, no longer making my skateboard glue. Uh, they're going out of business, driven out by the Chinese and, and foreign sourced uh, glues that are so much cheaper. National Casein was actually made in Chicago and Texas. Um, uh, lost them. That glue was definitely a stiffer glue. Um, compared to Type Bond 2 and Type Bond 3. By the way, Type Bond 2 made way better decks than Type Bond 3. Type Bond 3 uh, really did not work for me. And as far as it's waterproof, I don't know why they get to put waterproof on there. That stuff's not waterproof. None of it's waterproof. Your plies don't get your skateboard wet. The plies between the, the plies will soak water in, and the bond of your glue to your plies will be degraded and your board will become worthless damaged and compromised if you get your board wet i don't know why anyone is advertising water resistance at all um and um mike villalobos comments i like to do overnight pressings and love type bond two mike i'm so glad i was just gifted five gallons of type bond two it makes great skateboards and i'm not ashamed to uh, put out my brand on Type Bond 2 boards at all. I know of major operations that still use Type Bond 1. Uh, at least they did until five years ago, which is pretty recent. Nothing's changed in five years, really. Other brands are using seven minute set glue, um, epoxy based two part glues, things like that. But those are very dangerous for the workers. And you're going to find in foreign operations a lot more epoxy, quick glues, hard glues that offer stiffness because those workers 
Um, their safety is not of primary concern to those operations. That's the truth. Uh, worker safety in foreign countries is not a primary concern. Um, guys, I learned a new term. It's called soul authorship. And every one of my boards is, is a product of soul authorship. And that means that one person's hands worked this material from the beginning to the end. And I don't bring anyone into my workshop to help me sand boards and do that. I don't do that at all. And, um, and now Mike Villalobos comments, I'm going to talk about soul authorship a little more. Mike Villalobos comments, uh, of course, you know, my overnight pressings are due to Arizona heat and my press being uniquely outdoors. Mike is pressing great laminate outdoors on a porch in Arizona. And I'm telling you, if Mike Villalobos is making such great decks, and they are, they're great decks, and Mike is a, Mike is a super guy. Um, Mike's got a great story, amazing story. I, I wish for the day when um, I could, you know, have a studio and people in and have these longer chats because um, Mike's story and how he came into board making and his perspective on skateboarding and being a dad and being a human is is uh, probably not completely unique in every aspect but is extremely cool. 114 de degree dry heat, Mike says. This is an impossible laminate environment. Mike is succeeding in pressing great boards because you know what? It's not impossible. You don't have to have some specific esoteric humidity and moisture. When I first started talking about skateboarding laminate, it was 2005. Um, I had gotten involved with a small skateboard brand and I was very interested, since I was helping to sell the brand, I was interested in how are they made, how are they sourced, where are the selling points on this stuff, and I met Jim Gray on the phone, we talked, and we began, I began to hear from the riders and the people who worked in the company, oh, you could never press a board in the Midwest, the barometric pressure, the humidity, the dew point, all this stuff. Here's a bunch of guys who don't know anything about meteorology. They don't know much about earth science, and they're talking about barometric pressures. And you can never transport them by plane because the laminate will pop. This, all this was mythology, entirely mythology. Because I had always been proposing that, hey, maybe we could build a press and press some custom cruiser boards. You know, it'd be great to do this. You know, 2005, 2006, I got fired 2007. They brought me back uh, 2007. 2008, I left and I started Fickle. 2009, I started building my own press. 2010, I started pressing my own stuff. 2011, I started to release some of my boards into the market. And I'm learning more and more. Mike Villalobos, case in point, able to make terrific decks, 114 dry heat, Arizona, overnight pressing. This stuff is accessible to skateboarders all across the country. And how is it profiteering or... or um, how is it uh, mercenary of me to promote this when what I'm basically promoting is for, for a whole bunch of people to make what I make and sell what I sell? You know, that's, you know, I, I'm tired of people saying Lou's just in it for the money. I want to make good money. I want to make a good living for me and my family. That's not something people should resent or use as a point to, to knock me down or knock me out. Um, I'm certainly not in it just for the money. If I were in it just only for the money, I would have done what Brad Dorfman does. I would have bought a thing and sold a thing, ruined a thing, sold a thing, bought a thing, ruined a thing, sold a thing, and made sure everything is, is manufactured where nobody cares about inhaled hazards, uh, epoxy glue, formaldehyde contents, dust management, on and on and on, and make sure that we insulate ourselves from that by... I mean, guys, it's cutthroat, and it's dirty, and it's sad. Um, oh, and Mike Villalobos just comments that fractal burning experimental decks next week, hopefully. Mike has been working with a microwave or something to get a fractal burner made. You guys know about this fractal burning? Um, dudes will put on both ends of the board and let the fractal burn happen, and then they'll pull it off. They do an epoxy fill and a finish. Uh, some gorgeous stuff coming out in the fractal burning. Um... Uh, uh, I think it's called burned boards. Oh, I can't remember. Um, but the uh, the there's a guy I'm friends with him on Facebook. You can find him on my feed, uh, and he's burning decks, and um, it's exciting, cool, fun. And uh, Mike is going to be um, Mike is uh, waiting for the GTO cable, which I don't know what one of those is, but um, 
So we, we are talking about soul authorship now. That's another topic today. Um, soul authorship means that uh, mine are the only hands. And when it comes to a board, can't guarantee on a sticker. Um, we had Sean Gibson in the shop yesterday making stickers. Loved it. Uh, Sean did a great job making sticker, stickers. And, um, and uh, I'm just reading some, uh, reading some fractal burning comments here. Um, so stickers, hats, and shirts. Uh, so far, I'm the only guy making shirts, but I'm sure David, Sean, some of the team members uh, might come in and do shirts and stuff. Um, I'm wearing one of our shirts today. I resurrected this. Oh, it's a fickle. Barney Fife, and for me, on my shirts, I always put them low down. Um, gas thermal oil, heavily insulated cable for 15,000 volts. Mike, this fractal burning, way out of my league. And especially, you know, I, I'm curious to see how it affects strength. I'm pretty sure that the boards can be pretty strong. Uh, but you are losing, like, up to two layers of wood, and you're cooking uh, maybe all the layers of the glue, so we're going to see. But they're beautiful. And for wall hangers, for commemoratives, for trophies, I think a fractal burned board is superb, awesome. They're, I mean, it's just super good. Um, so sole authorship is something that I, and I am now, I've come to the point where I'm ready to put a maker's mark on my work. I haven't been doing it. Um, I tried a wood burn for a while. I didn't like it because I don't like fire in the shop. There's too much sawdust in the shop. I don't like fire. I've got fire extinguishers like every six feet in my shop and um, very uncomfortable with uh, fire in the shop. But working on a maker's mark, um, we bought a laser cutter online, uh, a laser engraver online. It was a very slow, small model, and it turned out to be a scam. It was a Russian scam, no joke, and we lost a bunch of money uh, out of the budget on just getting scammed. The, these guys put these things for sale on a whole bunch of sale sites, and then as soon as the first round of orders came in, they shut down their companies nixed their whole thing and they took all the money and ran and because it's across international lines it's unpursuable so we lost a bunch of money on buying a laser engraver so um, truth be told the laser engraver that we need for the volume of boards I'm doing is 10 times that one but I thought for certain ones that we could let it do it would take like a half an hour to do a simple maker's mark I'm working on welding up a, um, a new handle that I can uh, work with and um, Darren Mossman, Minneapolis, two cold to press boards in your basement. I have great news for you. <laughs> if you've got a basement, um, <laughs> Sam Cook, fire in the shop keeps me warm. Lasers are awesome. Sam Cook makes great boards out of Muncie, Indiana. Life skateboards, check them out. Darren Mossman, too cold in Minneapolis, in uh, Minnesota. Is it Minneapolis? Yep. Uh, too cold in Minneapolis to make boards in the basement. Here's what I think. You get a couple cans of great stuff, do your edges, seal your windows. Randy Wakefield, good morning to you. It's nice to have the Facebook guys chiming in. I really appreciate it. Um, you take a cold basement, and if you can get it 40 degrees in there, you can press boards. As long as you're long curing them, that cold temperature will keep your open work time long. And uh, 40 to 50 degrees is all you need to, to get that glue to finish. After they've been in overnight, you pop them out, take them upstairs to a, uh, to a, uh, a closet, nice and small. Let them gas out, let them, let them air out and dry and cure in the closet. Don't stack them weird. If you got a three pack or a two pack, keep them together, let them gas out, and then uh, take them apart and store them without touching anything, touching each other. like two points of contact laying on a shelf and you'll have great boards so anybody who's in a cold basement do what you can to warm it up and if you can get it 40 degrees or above you're gonna be all right 50 is better than 40 60 is perfect 70 is okay 80 is too hot and you got Via Lobos in Arizona pressing in 114 and you're still making it. I have become convinced that we can do this and that there should be thousands of small makers across skateboarding. To me, this is a renovation. This is a reconstitution. This is a, a, a renaissance in skateboarding that returns the soul of skateboarding right where it should be in the value, quality, authenticity, and inspiration of the actual deck itself. Having a, someone's name on your board because they skate better than you is a good thing because they inspire you to skate, to skate better. You love their style. That's a good thing. 
but having a board that is pressed by someone who cares about you, who cares how it performs, this we should see a thousand workshops across America. And if I had my druthers, I would travel around America building workshops. I love building boards, but I love building workshops even more. My workshop was a beast to get built. It was really, really less than completely fun because the whole time I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I was working off my best wisdom and 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 it was it was pretty good. Uh, it was emotional because I'd been told it can never be done by people I respected and people that I admired. And um, two space heaters for a hundred dollar shop is sixty nine. Outside's forty one. Randy Wakefield, that's a perfect temperature. I mean, you could save a little money and bring it down to fifty five. <laughs> Boy, I like you guys. And I'm really grateful to be going back in the shop. I'm going to take the kid from the one school to the other school. Go to the shop. I'm going to uh, press a fresh fresh batch. I've got a noon meetup at the shop. Someone's coming in for a lens crafter experience. We're going to put a board together for him. He only lives 10 minutes away. So um, I love having local and regional folks come to my shop. I wish more wood. Um, the, pun intended, more wood. Um, but... Uh, well, I didn't intend the pun, but I went and I owned it. I own the pun. Um, I don't have a lot of local business because people who ride my boards in the uh, southern Midwest get vibed real hard. Um, I am seen as the worst guy ever. I'm seen as a total shit talker and a bad guy. I'm not, and so I'm happy. The truth is all I care about. Um, but, uh, oh, I love a paint room. Randy w Wakefield is building a new paint room. Um, I have a paint corner with a big downdraft that works very well, and I'm actually building out of an old office chair a carousel to shoot each board and then rack it instead of shooting them on the rack. I'm getting a lot better experience. Vape enthusiast. There. That one's for all the folks that want to make silly edits of me and put them on their private Instagrams. <laughs> we, we've had a rash of... Louis stupid videos coming out and I <laughs> gotta tell you I really enjoy them um, I'm not joking being spoofed being mocked being ridiculed is part of being a public person and um, I really enjoy some of the spoofs I get um, people want to make fun of my they want to make fun of me for being religious I'm definitely a religious person uh, I have a huge huge Jesus is Lord complex in my life they want to make fun of me for being culturally open and open for diversity in skateboarding. And skateboarding is about you riding your board. It's not about who's better than who. Um, and they want to talk about me like I'm a shit talker because I call out major issues in skateboarding, especially at the, uh, the uh, territorial retail level, especially, I mean, I'm dealing right now with, uh, I've got, a house of Pawn down in Bradenton, Florida. There's a shop that knows how to handle an opportunity to develop a market for premium product, you know. And here's me working with them, uh, Floyd Howard Pruitt, the owner. That guy is a true heart in skateboarding, and um, a true a true skateboarder's skateboarder. Uh, he has. You see, the question isn't how good you skate; it's how much do you love skateboarding, and how much do you love people, and how well do you channel that love. In behavior with integrity and and that's a whole different resume um, and uh, th that's a whole different resume and House of Pawn has it he's developed a premium line of skateboards with fickle boards as well as a factory line of skateboards I'm all for it the factory line is selling for like $35 $40 and the premium line is selling for about 70 and I couldn't be more happy Colin Weir rides for fickle boards down there and he's killing it every day on his board but he's killing it from the heart at being the kind of person that makes you want to skate um, and whew, starting to get excited I'm really getting excited so you know what we need to do when you start getting excited is you got to take a break and I think I'm going to conclude with this um, I, uh, I know you guys know that my favorite EDC my favorite everyday carry is my D Kistner custom knife D made me this to my specs. I wanted rough hewn. I want it's excellent steel. I don't know if there's a number on this steel, but it's excellent steel. Um, D made this for me, and I asked for thinner scales. I like a thinner knife, and um, that is my. I forgot what model this knife is, but uh, Tragen. It's a Tragen Elite. That's what it is. And uh, boy, do I love 
this blade. It's uh, it's delightful. You can see that the uh, the rivets are also lanyard capable. Um, I could wrap this handle uh, if I wanted to, and, and it comes in a Kydex sheath with a leather backer, adjustable level for my belt, and D made me this knife, and I love D. I love his family, and uh, I love my D Kistner knife, and I show it to you guys a lot. Um, but I have also made the acquaintance of Michael O'Mockerly, and Michael is a knife maker here, and Michael's knife making style is very high end. I mean, we're talking like a three inch blade for $400. This guy is absolutely amazing, and he is the guy who told me the term sole authorship. All of his knives are sole authorship, and I was traveling through, and Michael gave me this. It is a change purse that I carry um, when I'm riding, uh, just in case I need anybody to change their mind about taking my purse. So this is a beautiful little thing. Um, I really enjoy this as a fob for my keys. Um, and uh, this is with me on the road a lot of trips. It's a really, really good change purse. It'll definitely change. Woo, that hurts. And the last thing I want to show you just to cleanse, cleanse the palate is a medium and fine sharpening kit that uh, is a nice little sharpening kit that I like to use diamond. You put a little water on it and uh, just run that bad boy. Wipe it off. Stow it back in your stuff. Good for a motorcycle trip when your edge goes dry. All right, friends. Um, yesterday was the Condor knife and tool. Uh, this is a Skinner, Condor Skinner. This was yesterday's. I like the, uh, I like the, the handle. It has a good pommel on it, a good shape, and uh, one day perhaps I'll skin. It has a rounded bevel. Um, definitely have to sharpen it correctly so you keep the skinner bevel. And thank you all for joining me today. This has been a, this has been uh, Facebook, YouTube, and archival wide angle. I'm gonna now put the wide angle up on YouTube as well as the live. You guys enjoy, and also this will wind up on the podcast. So. Um, theoretically, you guys can uh, go on our podcast as we continue to put one or two up a week uh, of these, and you can enjoy the archive without the video distraction for traveling in your cars. I love talking to you. I love hearing from you. I love making your skateboards. And, you know, um, as always, hi, Mom. I love you. All right, friends, I'm going to stop this. This is our, our chief recording now, and I'm going to stop it. I've, done, I've stopped the Facebook, I've stopped the YouTube Live, and now I'm going to stop this one. The YouTube Live is processing on the tablet. Pull you guys off of there, let you see. Facebook is saving, YouTube is processing, and uh, now I'm going to shut you guys down and send you through the uh, interspheres. Here, I'll pull up YouTube, enter, and I'm going to plug you guys in and uh, take the file off of here. Thanks for being with me today. Thanks for enjoying the show, and I uh, can't wait to see you soon. Peace.